It appears you authored your report on August 27th, 2008. Is that correct? Well, you still have an objection? No, no. All right, you may answer. Yes, August 27th. Okay. And just so we're clear, uh, is that the day you wrote it, or do you kind of, is that the date it's finalized? How does that work? That's the day it was, uh, this section of the report, or this portion of it, was entered into our report management system. Okay, so prior to writing a report, do you take notes, something of that nature? Yes, yeah. Okay, and then you get together at a certain point in time and put it together? Yes. And the final draft, so to speak, is what we're talking about of 8-27-2008? Yes, and it gives it that time stamp of okay. when it was finally entered. All right, um, and in that report, you communicate, or you, it seems like you learned the fact that, um, from the report, improper impeachment. Please state your question. All right, and finished it, but um, it appears that you came away from that autopsy with the knowledge, or with the belief, that Mr. Alexander had been shot first, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you base that on your conversation with Ms. Dr. Horn, excuse me. Uh, with my observations through the observation window and also with a small conversation with the doctor. Okay. And then do you recall on August 7th of 2009 uh, giving some testimony in court related to this case? Yes, it's almost a year later. Yes. In a moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may approach witness. You may. Detective, this has been marked as Exhibit 260. I'm going to place it before you for now. I know you probably don't remember what you said exactly. Uh, as you pointed out, it was almost a year later to the uh, police report um, that you, you wrote. Uh, but you were under oath when you gave this testimony, right? Yes. Okay. Um, if you could be so kind. Let's see here, as to turn to page 18 of that document. And I'll draw your attention to line 14. Yes. Uh, and you were asked there if you had spoken to Dr. Horn about this case. Hearsay. It's sworn testimony, Judge. Approach, please. Continue. You were asked if you, on that day, you were asked if you had spoken to Dr. Horn about this case. Is that correct? Objection improper impeachment. Overruled, you may answer that question. Yes. And you recall the answer you gave? I stated I did. Okay. And when did that conversation take place? Uh, a day prior to this hearing. Okay. So your conversation with Dr. Horn then would have took place on August 6, 2009? Yes. Okay. 
And you were in court for his testimony, correct? I don't recall if I was or not. Okay. Did you hear him testify to the idea that you, he didn't talk to you on August 6, 2009? Judge, in Dr. Horn's statement, he said he doesn't remember. All right, so your testimony was that you spoke to Dr. Horn one day before you gave this testimony. Are you talking about this testimony here? Yes, it's not testimony today, but testimony here. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And in that testimony, you were asked about the sequencing of injuries according to Dr. Horn, is that correct? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, and you were asked about, in terms of sequencing, which came first, which wound came first, correct? Yes. Okay. And you recall what your answer was? I answered that the gunshot was possibly first. Okay. And what did you base your answer on? Well, I'd spoken to Dr. Horn the day before over the phone on a short conversation, knowing that I was having a hearing uh, on this matter. And I uh, discussed mainly uh, what kind of pain the victim would have gone through at that time, if um, the, the victim had suffered at that time, uh, those kinds of questions. Okay. And during that, we kind of discussed some other things, and one of them was uh, very briefly the sequencing. Okay. Well, you say very briefly, but this would, this would be important if you're giving sworn testimony in court, right? The sequencing was not that important in this, in this case at that time. So you felt it wasn't important to give accurate testimony in court in your prior proceedings? Is that what you're telling me? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying the most important portion was the, uh, whether the victim, Travis Alexander, suffered in this well, let case. Let me ask you not, not what's the most important portion. Let's focus on what I asked. What I asked was whether or not it was important to give accurate testimony when you're testifying in a court. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And you did testify to the idea that the gunshot wound to the head was first, right? Yes. Okay. And you went on, you were asked also in that hearing, and you also talked about unconsciousness and that sort of thing. Uh, but you were also talked, you also talked about um, whether or not after incurring the shot to the head, Mr. Alexander could be conscious. Do you recall being asked that? Yes. Okay. And you relayed, did you, do you recall relaying the opinion that Mr. Alexander would be conscious after being, ex in the, uh, suffering the shot to the head? Yes, but that was my opinion at that time. That was your opinion, but what you were, so you weren't being, you weren't relaying Dr. Horn's opinion, as you said during those transcripts, you were relaying I, your I own? I would say that was my understanding of what the situation was, but I'm not the doctor, I'm not the ultimate decision maker right. on that. So your claim here today is that when you were at this important proceeding in this death penalty case, you were giving your opinion as to what you thought Dr. Horn might think as opposed to when you were testifying, you t told the parties involved there that you'd spoken to him and this is what he believed. That was my understanding. You also gave opinions uh, about, uh, that supported um, this theory that uh, Mr. Alexander had been shot first, correct? Yes, I do recall that. Okay, I mean specifically you talked about uh, that he aspirated blood over the sink, correct? Yes, I do okay. remember that. 
And what does that mean? Aspirated blood means uh, blood being aspirated through the mouth, through the nose, and onto an object such as the sink or the mirror in this case. Okay. So now you said, oh, it was your, it was your uh, misunderstanding of Dr. Horn's testimony and that sort of thing. And, and you said you weren't sure if you were here in court, but in these court proceedings, is this the first you've heard of a different story being told about when the wounds occurred? No. You've heard about it before? Yes, uh, during Dr. Horn's testimony. Okay. I thought you were talking about another testimony Dr. Horn gave, but I was here during his testimony the other day. Okay, so during this trial, Dr. Horn's testimony, you were here, right? Yes, I was. Okay, I want to be accurate this time. And you heard him testify then that he hadn't spoken with you the day before the hearing, correct? Objection. He said he didn't know. Sustained. You heard him also testify that says some of the things that we just talked about, about not losing consciousness, how that was something that he would never have said. You heard him say that? Yes. Okay. But that's what you testified to at the hearing. Yes. Okay. And so this change of story is something that you first heard about at trial. No, it's not the first time I've heard of it. Okay. When was the first time you heard this story changed? I don't remember. Uh, it might be several months ago or a year ago. What was the context? Uh, I don't recall exactly, but I know Dr. Horn had, had uh, gone and given an interview, I guess, with you and defense counsel, and something came out to me uh, informing me of, of what he stated during the interview. Okay. Did you make any attempts to correct the mistaken testimony you gave in 2009? No, because I told the truth and uh, spoke to what I believed at that time. I'm not about to change my testimony. But it was inaccurate. It was not inaccurate, it was mistaken. Mistaken, and I that's, see. that's my mistake if I mistook his words or misunderstood him, but I am not a doctor and I'm not about to give testimony on experience I'm not, of a doctor. I'm not saying you're a doctor detective. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying, and we just talked about it, about the importance of giving accurate testimony. And in this hearing, you were asked specifically, if you talked to Dr. Horn, you said yes. You were asked if Dr. Horn had an opinion of the sequencing of the injuries. Right? Yes. Objection, that's the answer. They didn't ask you, what do you think, Detective Flores? What's your medical opinion? They didn't ask you that, did they? No. They asked you, what was Dr. Horn's opinion? And that's a pretty simple question, straightforward, right? Yes. Okay. And so what you're telling us today is that you substituted your judgment for his? Is, is that what I'm hearing you say? No, if I gave that testimony, it was a misunderstanding of what Dr. Horn told me. Okay. So, it's inaccurate, is what you're saying today? Yes. Okay. And that's what I asked you a few moments ago. Did you take any steps to correct your inaccurate testimony? And you said, no, it wasn't inaccurate. It was, mis it was a misunderstanding. Yes. I'm confused. Well, is it, is it inaccurate or is it a misunderstanding? Which is it? Well, it's a misunderstanding okay. of what Dr. Horn told me. Okay, it's a pretty big one, isn't it? No, I don't believe so. You don't believe so, okay. Judge, if we could have a, take a break at this point in time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take the afternoon recess at this time. Please be back in the designated area at 10 minutes after three. Please remember the admonition, you are excused. Record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. Mr. Nurmi, you may continue with cross-examination. <clears throat> to 
Detective, this hearing on August 29th, um, who is representing the state at that hearing? 29th or August 7th? Is that the one you're talking about? August 7th. I'm sorry if I said another date. I apologize. August 7th, 2009. Who is representing the state? I believe it was Mr. Thomas. Goes to motive and bias. Uh, overruled. You may answer. You may. Who is the prosecutor? Who represented the state that hearing? It was Mr. Martinez. Okay. And earlier you testified that you said it was a, a misunderstanding or your mistake. Uh, your testimony that day was a mistake, right? No, my testimony was a mistake. Uh, the portion of sequencing was a misunderstanding I had with Dr. Horn. Okay. Well. You were asked some pretty specific questions. You were asked if it was Dr. Horn's opinion that this rendered the victim unconscious or did he still remain conscious? That's a pretty specific question, right? Yes. And you answered, he said it would have rendered, possibly rendered the victim unconscious, but definitely could have been conscious, correct? Yes. Okay. You also said, or you were asked, but in the circumstance based on all the other injuries, it was his opinion that it did not re render him unconscious, correct? Yes. Okay. And you say that you misunderstood that, you misunderstood Dr. Horn. That's your testimony here today, right? In the conversation I had with him prior to that hearing, I had spoken to him regarding uh, the anguish, the amount of pain, the suffering that, that Travis would have gone through that I'm day. I'm going to object. It's non-responsive and 403. Sustained. Can you repeat the question? I'm asking that you're claiming that what you said in that was a misunderstanding of Dr. Horn's, con your conversation with Dr. Horn. Yes. That's what it was. 
Okay. Yes. And, you know, we've seen uh, Miss Arias uh, have interviews on television. You gave one as well, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay. And do you recall who that was for? I believe it was CBS. Okay. And from my recollection, you would probably know better than I, but that appeared to be a pretty lengthy interview. Is that correct? Um, hour or so maybe over an hour yeah yes. okay and in that particular occasion uh, you offered the same theory that mr. Alexander had been shot first is that correct yes it is okay and you did that on a couple of different occasions is that right yes that's what I believed okay and so but this was based on your misunderstanding of dr. Horn that's what you're telling us right yes okay and so you repeated this misunderstanding. You put this misunderstanding first in your police report, right? Yes. And second time, under oath of giving sworn testimony, you perpetrated the same misunderstanding. Is that correct? Yes. OK. And then again, you did it uh, while being interviewed on national television. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I believed. OK. Thank you, Detective.